these are the solutions for a b c and d in 686 div 3 round the special permutation you are given n okay and you want to make a permutation of those n numbers so a permutation is basically all those numbers from 1 to n occurring once so yeah this is not a permutation since 2 occurs twice here 2 doesn't occur and there's a 4 so we have to find out the correct permutation now if we see here for two elements the answer is 2 and 1 and okay the great thing over here is permutation such that pi is not equal to i so it can be anything but the index should not be equal to the value so immediately when i saw index and value and then this example also first i thought let me reverse the numbers right 1 2 3 4 i'll make it 4 3 2 1 but then if it is a even number like 3 so 1 2 3 and 3 2 1 2 will be at index 2 only right so that's the problem so what i did instead was i rotated the list by 1 so if you see what i did let's take some examples as you can see here for 8 elements i have rotated the list by 1 just one rotation i'm sure like you can see geeks for geeks anyway it's just a rotation next one again it's rotated by one so a rotation is basically we took the one from the front and put it in the end that's all i did start at two and print one at the end you could code it like that also so just one for loop that was the solution unique bid auction uh, you can forget this but n people are there who choose a number they choose a number ai you win if your number is unique and the smallest so immediately we see these like many people choosing numbers and all that correct so what i decide to do is use a hash map of the frequency of each number so in b now i just need the minimum unique number right after I've got everyone's frequencies, I need the minimum unique one. Let's put a default value of minus 2. And then let's go through all the positions, right? All the bits. And check. If this is unique. Unique means it has a frequency of 1. If it has a frequency greater than 1, it's not unique. Unique means it occurs only once. If the frequency is 1. And... The number you have currently chosen is bigger than this number. So you want the unique number and you want the minimal number. So if this is smaller or you have not found anyone till now, right? Minus 2. Initially you have said it's minus 2. So this is the first unique element or it's a smaller unique element. Then you update the answer. And in the end you return the answer. Plus 1 for 1 indexing. Next was problem C. Sequence transform. Uh, should I go see this example? I'll show you this example. So as you can see here, one one five five four four. There's no unique vote, so minus one is returned by my code. And here, if you see two three two four two, three and four both are unique votes, but my code will select three since it's the smaller one, right? The frequency won't get updated when you reach four. The result won't get updated when you reach 4. Anyways, I think that is fine. Use the find out the frequencies and check for the smallest one. This was very interesting. Given the sequence of n integers, okay, you want to transform it so that everything becomes equal. You can do this by deleting sub 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 substrings segments, okay, l comma r, where this element doesn't exist. So initially I was thinking for a while, then upon seeing uh, some of the examples, I realized that look at these, these are all ones, so it's always going to be safe, right? You don't need to delete anyone, but here you can just delete all these four, or you can delete all these four, or you can delete these three and this one. So first thing I thought was, let me remove these duplicates, three ones is as good as a single one right in terms of segments 
three ones is as good as a single one. So the first thing I did was I converted it into v unique. Uh, v unique is just no no repeating duplicates, right? Like these strings, no repeating. So how did I do that? Uh, basically, for all the integers, if you are not equal to the previously inserted integer, insert it. Now count the least frequency minus. That was a greedy idea I had, but that was wrong. Now in these unique elements, I count I count the frequency of each segment. Think of segments now. Now the interesting part. I have to choose one number that I will convert everyone into, right? So let's say for all these int x values, what I'll do is I'll assume this is the number. So now how many segments do I have to delete? In the worst case. In the worst case, if I have frequency of x, if I have three segments, that means I have to delete one before, one after, 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 right? So I have to delete all these other segments, right? One is our selected value. Zero is all the other values. If you look at this one, you think of uh, one is the selected value. So you have to delete this segment, this segment, right? So you might have noticed, maybe our string is like this: one zero, one zero. So then there's no zero in the start, right? So if the first element is equal to our chosen r one, then you do minus minus. If the last element is equal to, again you do minus minus because what if there was no zero there also? Here there are two ones, but the answer is not two plus one because both these get removed, the edges, right? So I'm just talking in terms of one and zero, but actually you can see it in terms of anything. Let's see in terms of two over here. So you, this is a zero. This is a zero. This is a zero. These two are a zero, but there's no zero after this, right? So I just do minus minus to not count the zero after. And if the first element is also my value, I do the minus minus to not count the first element. You realize this is frequency of number of contiguous segments of that value x, because I made it unique first, so that there are no duplicates that are adjacent, and then I go through all of them and decide if I make everybody into this value x. So how many zeros do I have to delete? You will realize here when you take three, uh, when you take three over here, you have a zero on the right and on the left, right? Or right. And left, so the answer is two. If you took two over here, you have to delete this zero, to delete this zero, and if to delete this zero. If you take one over here, you can count this as one zero, some segment between it, and again this as one zero. This works because I made it unique. Um, yeah, number into sequence very um, similar to code chef November cook off problem. Because of the prime factorization, so basically you want some numbers that multiply and give you n. So immediately you should think of the factors of that number, right? These are all going to be factors, so they are going to be prime factors. Now the beauty is, a i plus one should be divisible by a i. So what's the maximum length possible of divisible factors? So prime factorization of a number, what does it give us? This prime factorization. What does it give us? If you see closely, let's take a number for example, sixty. Prime factorization of sixty gives us two raised to a certain number of times two comes out a certain number of times. Correct. It gives you two into two into two into three into five. So basically, two raised to two, three raised to one. Five raised to one, correct? Prime factorization gives you all the primes, the number of times that they occur. Okay, thinking uh, this is a normal prime factorization code. While it is divisible by two divided by two, for all the other i up to square root. While it is divisible by i, you know, divided by i and add that to the result. Now the easy part. If you see now, what I did was. I just took the most frequent factor. 
so in the case of 60 2 raised to 2 comes 2 comes the most number of times right it has the highest power correct 2 comma 2 comma 3 comma 5 so frequency of 2 is the greatest so simple I'll just print 2 2 that's it so one more thing to realize is they had given us the condition that you should multiply these numbers and give you n okay that's fine so basically on the last element I'll insert the 3 and the 5 now what is 3 and 5 3 and 5 is nothing but 60 divided by whatever came before this 2 if there were more 2's here it would be 60 divided by all that 5 2's right so that's my logic take the prime factors the one that occurs most frequently use that one okay uh, the code is little dirty here let me clean it and show you so the one that is occurring most frequently that is best okay that's the best value now what you want to do is you want to print out the size of the sequence first you want to print out the size of the sequence immediately when I saw this 2 2 90 I realized the answer actually that it will be 2 2 and then again 2 right the power of 2 is 3 and 360 but 2 into 2 into 2 will give me 8 and I want 360 so I just do 360 divided by 8 to get that 90 yeah 4 sorry 2 into 2 will give me 4 and 360 divided by 4 gives me 90 so now what's the best value that's what I'm going to print as k then I'll maintain one prefix best so all the prime factors that are considered until now and then I'll print 2 k minus 1 times right I'll print that prime factor minus 1 times why you'll notice soon because the last time that I printed you realize here we didn't print 3 2's we printed 2 2 and then 360 divided by 2 into 2 so at the end you just print n divided by whatever prefix has come so prefix is nothing but the number of times you've already printed the most frequently occurring prime factor so actually I would reword this to find the most frequently occurring prime factor and what to multiply the last values with all the other factors right so you do divide by whatever is remaining correct if you do n divide by whatever you've already multiplied so basically prefix best is nothing but all the best right so best star best star best this is let's say prefix best correct so basically best star best star best star n divide by best star best star best at the end this best star best 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 will get cancelled right and you will be left with n so the entire subsequence will print out n that was the I think that was it probably me I have uh, written a brute force if see first I did it like print two three times but then I realized my mistake that the last time when I print I have to divide n by all the previous elements so I got 180 then I got 360 and then I just got 90 finally also this confused me for a while uh, I was getting another value 7083 right I was getting 7083 but yeah that's because it's not a prime number this is not a prime number so 70687 is the correct answer anyways let me show you my code for e uh, take in all the edges is input right simple path visit self uh, these were some things I was thinking then I realized just do a DFS okay so for all the starting values I did a DFS and I just add up to the result every path that I visit correct since I don't want parts of size 0 I do minus n at the end and if it is not visited I continue down this path as a DFS depth first search basically and I just kept doing plus plus at the start of it then yeah mark yourself visited and then when you're backtracking mark yourself as unvisited that was all from my side thank you um, have a good day